Never before so much paralyzing terror. The sadistic leader of the bloody brew, whose only philosophy is anything goes. Welcome, weirdos, to Weird Wide, the podcast delivering all the weird all the time. I'm your host, J.D. Ross, Weirdo Supreme, and today I've got a heap and help and a weird for you. Uh, this episode uh, will almost definitely get you craving some pizza, uh, researching it definitely had me wanting some. So let's slice right into today's topic. Today, we're going to be talking about Papa John and his weird fall from grace. Now, to get an understanding of the whole thing, we have to take a look back at the history of Papa John the Man and Papa John's the pizza chain, uh, one of the world's most popular pizza chains, actually. Uh, as of December 2020, Papa John's uh, was the third most popular pizza chain globally, with over 5,500 locations in 49 countries. Now, Papa John's has always been synonymous with its founder, John Schnatter, a.k.a. Papa John. While other big chains would rely on a variety of marketing campaigns, Papa John's advertisements were always centered around Schnatter talking to the audience and going with a slightly more upscale presentation of better ingredients, better pizza. Much like Dave Thomas did with Wendy's when he was alive. Oh man, I miss I miss Dave Thomas. Uh, th- those were those were good commercials. I always I always liked Dave Thomas. So John Schnatter was born in Jeffersonville, Indiana on November 23rd, 1961. Uh, Actually, looks like a few uh, folk of note have come out of Jeffersonville. Uh, One of the co-founders of Molly Hatchet, Dwayne Rowland, uh, Eugene of WWE fame, and uh, several other uh, pro sports figures. A little fun fact, too. uh, Jeffersonville had a nickname in the 1930s, uh, was called Little Las Vegas, uh, and actually helped the area to recover from the impacts of the Great Depression via gambling. Uh, even attracting the likes uh, of uh, Al Capone, uh, John Dillinger, you know, several other uh, big figures of the of the day. And there doesn't seem to be much uh, notable about Schnatter's early life. Uh, his mother, Mary, was a real estate agent. and His father, Robert, was a judge. Uh, Schnatter graduated from Jeffersonville High in 1980 and received a business degree from Ball State University in 1983. Uh, a year later, he knew what he wanted to do, uh, and he convinced Papa Bobby to let him open up a, a business in the back of his tavern, Mix Lounge, uh, which was actually struggling at the time. Papa Bobby allowed him to knock out a broom closet in the back of the lounge and uh, make room for John's pizza startup. Now, to finance operations early on, John sold his 1971 Camaro Z28 for $1,600 and used those funds to buy the, p- the initial startup pizza equipment. I uh, looked up the inflation amount uh, and 1600 in 1984 is worth roughly 4500 today. Not a bad deal selling a car. Uh, it does illustrate that, uh, that the Papa did have a bit of a leg up. Uh, he clearly wasn't from a lower income family. Uh, Papa Bobby being a judge and having a car like that right out of college, uh, one that you could even sell for enough to use for startup money as a business. It's a pretty good start. Uh, the Camaro will come up later, uh, has a bit of an attachment to Schnatter's entire dealio. So the pizza that he was selling out of the back of Mixed Tavern was popular enough that John was able to expand uh, about a year later in 1985, uh, and he moved into the adjoining space from there. That year, Papa John's rolled out uh, one of the staples of their brands, the dipping sauces, which are still popular to this day. Uh, I always like the garlic one myself. So in 1986, the company began to offer uh, franchise operations, and this is where a brand can really get into the expansion game. Uh, from what I could find, a Papa John's franchise will cost a one-time fee of $25,000 per site, per restaurant, then an additional 5% royalty of net sales, plus 8% of net sales for advertising. Kind of similar to how uh, Ray Kroc took uh, McDonald's, from a sing- McDonald's from a single location to the world's biggest fast food chain. Now, along with the startup costs, uh, potential potential franchise owners are required to have a net worth of about $250,000. Once the potential franchise owner has everything in place, they're able to open up their own shop under the Papa John's name, and they're held to the standard that the company has set. So they're required to run the playbook set out by the company. 
So in 1993, Papa John's became a publicly traded company and stocks were available on the stock exchange. A year later, it had 500 stores under its flag. And in 1997, had 1,500. It's a pretty impressive rate of growth. I mean, in about a decade, going from 500 stores after you know opening in the back of a broom closet uh, to you know even even more you know a thousand more just a few years later, uh, not a bad rate of growth at all. Uh, saw even more going into the new millennium, and this definitely solidified Papa John's as one of the top one of the one of the nation's top pizza chains. Now, remember the Camaro from earlier. So in 2009, the Camaro did come back into the picture. Uh, Schnatter offered a a reward of $250,000 for his original Camaro. And on the 26th of August that year, it was located and he bought it back. He even paid the family he'd sold it to a finder's fee of $25,000 as they had since sold it. And in celebration of getting it back, he ran a promotion that anyone who owned a Camaro would get a free pizza. Uh, I didn't know until I started researching this how much uh, the Camaro thing was part of the uh, part of their brand. Uh, apparently, uh, the original is on display in the main uh, he- yeah in the main headquarters in Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, and the company has several replicas that they use for public appearances and tours and such. The original was even stolen in 2015 in Detroit, where it was slated for a public appearance, but it was later recovered. Uh, I honestly, I can't imagine. Even, you know, even being like in, in that level of success and, you know, rich, you know, financial success and all that spending $250,000 for a car. I mean, I, I, it just doesn't, doesn't compute for me. Uh, I, I get, he had some special attachment to it, uh, but that just feels like, just feels like a vulgar, vulgar display of wealth to me. Right. So having taken a company literally from a broom closet, to one of the most recognizable pizza chains in the world. It seemed like everything was coming up roses for the Papa. So when did things start to turn? Well, it turns out that the super friendly face of better ingredients, better pizza, had a lot more to hide during his years of building an empire of cheese and tomato sauce, both in his business and his personal lives. In 1999, the Papa was accused of stalking and groping a cell phone saleswoman named Leslie Workman. Now, I can't even imagine how much of a mind fuck that had to be. Stalking and sexual harassment is already bad enough. But to be getting that from such a public figure and one like Schnatter just adds this whole different level of strangeness to the whole thing. Like, imagine before all of, like the craziness that we all know about today came out uh, and, you know, you just had the better ingredients, better pizza guy staring in your window at night. Just fucking insanity now of course the papa denied the the whole thing Uh, he claimed that workman was just trying to extort him for five million and was uh the whole thing was resolved in a confidential settlement however a decade later in 2009 similar incident occurred when he was accused of sexual harassment again this time by a 24 year old marketing employee at the company couldn't find any further details about that one um but again it was settled confidentially since then a lot of other shady things have started to come to light about the internal workings of the company uh in 2013 employees were required to sign non-disclosure agreements uh they include the usual kind of things such as trade secrets which i totally get you know i get that you know you definitely want to protect your brand uh, especially if your brand is predicated on the better ingredients better pizza thing but stranger than that the NDA is also protected uh, anything involving Papa John's personal life. They were forbidden from speaking about anything involving his personal life. Forbes magazine found out about the NDAs, um, began doing some digging themselves. Uh, Forbes spent months putting together the story with multiple sources, uh, many remaining anonymous for fear of repercussions from their employer, uh, and found out there was a massive bro culture going on at uh, Papa John's. Kind of makes me think of a pizza version of the Wolf of Wall Street with uh, Schnatter as the pizza, uh, the pizza version of Jordan Belfort. Other work culture elements, such as pitting employees against one another, uh, using employees to spy for Schnatter, uh, and even using some burner phones to conduct business. This is a fucking pizza chain. What level of shadiness are you into with your pizza business that you need a burner phone? Also, 
Has your have you ever had a boss that's at that's like asked you to spy for them? I I don't even know what the fuck I would say to that. Like, what what the hell? I don't know. I don't know, man. So it was also found out that the corporate employment strategy was not so much geared towards the best people for the job, but more about those that would fit into the more frat boy bill uh, and those that showed an undying loyalty to Papa John. These are the kind of things you'd expect from a hedge fund or any other shady ass financial institution. But again, not a pizza chain. You can really start to see like where the papa starts to kind of go a little bit megalomaniacal at this point. Like, are you a fucking Sith Lord or a pizza mogul? Now, the two previously mentioned harassment suits, they are the most well known. But there were at least three sources that claimed there were more confidential settlements and that the work culture was incredibly horrible towards female employees. The papa has been accused of asking uh, female employees bra sizes, giving unwelcome hugs, commenting on his underlings' wives, and encouraging employees to bring their mistresses to corporate events. That's awkward as shit, dude. I'm married, so I just can't, I can't even imagine what that would be. Like, that would be the most awkward shit ever. Like, because I would just end up bringing my wife to a corporate event. It's like, oh, hey, this is Bill from uh, marketing. Uh, oh, hey, is this, is this your wife? No, no, this is just my side piece that I, you know, I keep on the side. Oh, well, yeah. Good for you. Good for you, Bill. Other executives have been accused of things such as openly discussing porn and making lewd comments uh, as being the norm in the company culture. So this was definitely uh, a, a top down problem. Uh, you know, like when you've got rot at the top like that, uh, it really does permeate into the entire work culture. So really hard to fight, really hard to really hard to kind of get around with a lot of that especially when you don't toe the line, when you're not, uh, you know, when you don't go with the bro culture, you know, you tend to, you tend to find yourself out on your ass. Some locations have even been used in the drug trade. For example, a Washington state location. Uh, if you ask for extra olives, that was actually code for drugs. Uh, cocaine, acid, weed, oxy, ecstasy, and, and meth were all available to be purchased from this location. Someone tell me how mushrooms wasn't. Someone tell me how mushrooms was not an option. Like, like this is a pizza place. How can one of the drugs that you're selling not be mushrooms? Uh, apparently, undercover cops purchased uh, drugs multiple times in uh, what was in a sting operation that was called Operation Extra Olives. Uh, they would just wait in a parking lot and get a pizza box full of drugs. Now, can you imagine if you just really like olives on your pizza? And you just end up having a whole bunch of drugs show up to your door. I mean, like, you're just like, you're, you like olives. Like, I'm, 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 I want extra olives. That's all I want. That's all I want. And then just a bunch of fucking oxy shows up at your door. And you're like, that's not what I asked for. That's not what I asked for at all, man. There's also a store in Brooklyn where uh, the location was investigated for over two years. Uh, they managed to score, uh, law enforcement managed to score $40,000 worth of cocaine uh, delivered to undercover officers from that location. Uh, there's also been a slew of lawsuits over the years, uh, including one involving Iggy Azalea, uh, where a delivery driver shared her phone number with family uh, and was bombarded with calls from his friend, family and friends. Now, look, I know that's not the Papa's fault. I know that's like just like some rogue driver that went wrong. Um, but still, you know, when you got shit permeating down from the top, things like that will happen more often. I mean, I'm sure Pizza Hut has had some shit like that here and there. But I couldn't find anything about it. So, you know, just just saying, just put it out there. Uh, speaking of Pizza Hut, they were sued by Pizza Hut over the better ingredients, better pizza slogan. Uh, as the commercial was construed as taking aim specifically at Pizza Hut. Uh, pizza Hut claimed it was a violation of the Lanham, Lanham Act. Lanham? Lanham? Lanham Act? Which protects consumers from misleading information. Pizza Hut won the lawsuit. So apparently it is true that no one out pizzas the hut. Even in his early days, Schnatter made a deal with a friend in college to design the logo. Uh, to pay for it, he basically promised free pizza for life if the chain were to take off. But the Papa's even admitted that he never kept his end of that deal. Uh, these, plus many others, including racism as, uh, accusations, uh, spam texting violations, and even disputes of properly paying their own employees. Now, it really started to go off the rails in 2017. 
After record profits the year before uh, and posting a bad financial report in 2017, the Papa blamed the losses on the NFL. Now, by this time, Papa John's had a marketing agreement as the official pizza of the NFL uh, and even had uh, marketing contracts with 23 of its 32 teams. Schnatter blamed the national anthem protest for the losses uh, and was upset the NFL wasn't doing something about it. You can really see Schnatter getting too big for his britches at this point, uh, getting involved in a, in a massively divisive culture war, uh, like, you know, really begins to lead to his downfall. And again, you're a pizza mogul, man. Like, this is not this is not the game you should be getting involved in. Um, just my my personal opinion. Uh, Schnatter ordered the official sponsor designated removed from all advertising. Now, this is where he really fucks up. This is where he really starts to dig his hole deeper. In 2018, uh, he was made by, a, by the board of directors to participate in an internal sensitivity training to, to avoid making public remarks that would damage the company's reputation. He was starting to align more at this point with the uh, loud, uh, the, the extreme, the, ve the very loud alt-right vocalizations. Uh, actually, Papa John's has been considered unofficially the pizza of the alt-right because of this, uh, because of the, the side he really started to take vocally, uh, starting with the national anthem protests. Um, being that the entire company image is based around uh, one guy, it would make sense that they would take steps like this when he starts to kind of go wackadoodle. But someone in such a position of power and influence apparently just can't read the room sometimes. And during the conference call, the Papa was quoted as saying, quote, Colonel Sanders called blacks N words and never faced public outcry. And people in my home state of Indiana used to drag African-Americans from trucks until they died. End quote. What the fuck, dude? Like, is it just like one of those things where like when when people get to a certain age, like do they just like do they just start to just spew some weird amount of hatred or that had to have been in there the whole time that had to have been in there the whole time. I didn't know that Papa John's was racism pizza, uh, but I guess now we all know that Papa John's was racism pizza. After this, he was rightfully ousted from the company. Now, this is apparently when he went into full breakdown mode. Uh, he separated from his wife, Annette Cox, who he'd, mar he'd been married to since 1987. So she was there for most of the time. They were probably dating uh, when they when he first was starting up everything. Um, so, you know, she was there for you know all of the big growth, uh, all of the big all the big moments in the company. Uh, I'm sure he was an absolute joy to be around uh, after he was ousted from the company. Uh, I got to imagine it's a little bit like what Trump is like now, just constantly going on about like, you know, it's not right bullshit you know just just never ever like letting go uh i, I gotta imagine that's a that's a lot like what this was like so she filed for divorce in 2019 uh and uh 2019 was also the uh first his first public appearance since being ousted on wdrb wdrb uh fox affiliate in louisville where he said <laughs> he said he said that he had eaten 40 pizzas in 30 days which is a fucking insane amount of pizza and promising a day of reckoning. Uh, so here's here's a little bit of audio from that from that interview. I've had over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days. Livy currently and Mark Shapiro should be in jail. He has no pizza experience. He's never been in the pizza category. I would just say stay tuned. The day of reckoning will come. The record will be straight. Why not set the record straight now? I mean, what is it about the record that's not straight? <laughs> Stay tuned. I got to say, uh, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not a little dude, uh, so I know I can't really be talking shit, uh, fat shaming, if you will, uh, or uh, just shaming in general. But uh, did he looks like he had eaten 40 pizzas in 30 days? Uh, he's all sweaty and crazy eyed uh, and super ominous. Uh, I think what surprised me uh, the most was uh, his accent was this super like Southern grizzled, angry thing. Like uh, it's nothing like what the commercials sound like, you know, the commercials, he's all better ingredients, better pizza. You know, he sounds, uh, sounds like a super happy guy, you know, it's like, everything's good, but you know, in, in, in his, in, in that interview, he sounded like day of reckoning coming here. He's just all like, I don't know. Like, I feel like he'd been out pizza, like pizza out. 
Now, I actually do have a little bit of a surprise treat for you. I was actually able to arrange an interview with the Papa himself. Uh, so here he is. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Weird Wide. Papa John. Uh, Papa, thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. And we welcome a day of reckoning. Soon the world will know. Uh, yeah. Would you like to elaborate on? I have eaten so many pizzas. Can't fathom how many pizzas I've eaten. <laughs> You don't know anything about pizza. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I have uh, definitely eaten uh, my share of pizza in my time. I uh, the pizza sauce courses through my veins. The cheese has become one with me. I'm becoming more powerful than anyone could possibly imagine. <laughs> I am fueled by the power of the pizza. The pizza has made me all powerful. Better ingredients, better Papa. <laughs> well, it would appear that Papa John has ascended from disgraced megalomaniac uh, to demonic pizza power demon before our very eyes. The day of reckoning is nigh. I have opened a new pizza chain, the Pizza Getting Pizza Pit. Soon our pizza will fuel my revenge, and I will again reign as a god in the realm of pizza. Better revenge, better reckoning, pizza pit. Also, we are looking for advertising opportunities, so if you'd like, we can discuss that off the air. Oh, neat. Well, uh, it looks like Weird Wide might have a new sponsor, so keep your eye out for that. <sighs> And we're back. Uh, so it looks like some interesting things may be in store for the Papa. Thanks for sticking with me through that. Uh, the podcast isn't called Weird Wide for nothing. Now, Schnatter did promise a day of reckoning, uh, but we really haven't seen much since the interview. Uh, I do feel a need to point out that uh, the interview did take place in 2019 and was immediately followed by the shit show that was 2020. So who knows? Maybe Papa John and his new form have been working behind the scenes to spread disease and war and a general lead up to what seems to be the inevitable Armageddon. Or as his new uh, business venture would call it, a pizza get. What follows from here remains to be seen. Well, thanks for listening, weirdos. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, leave a comment. Yeah, give us a follow there. Uh, if you're listening on audio, uh, give us go on to Apple, Apple Podcasts. Give, a, give us a five-star rating. If there's any particular topics or any weird stories or anything like that, or even just, just want to say hi, shoot me over an email at weirdwidepodcast at gmail.com. Find me on TikTok and Instagram under Dudist Weirdo. And until next time, keep it weird.